again. I just don't give him my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi, so if the camera angle in this video shifts at all, I want to apologize because as soon as I started to film, my dog started being like really disruptive for some reason. And this was already my second time filming this video because the night before I filmed it and I was just way too nasally because you know, I'm getting over a cold. So yeah, sorry about that. Enjoy the video. Hi my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to focus on a specific kids channel. I've been asked to cover PBS like many times on this channel, whether it's specific shows shows or just as a topic in general. I haven't because I won't say I didn't grow up with PBS because that would just be a lie. There are so many iconic shows that came from the channel, but I feel like compared to other channels, it just wasn't on my radar as much, if that makes sense. Like PBS would be something I would watch if like I went to my grandma's house or something on occasion. So if anything, when people mention PBS in regards to being nostalgic, the first thing that actually comes to mind besides of course, the iconic shows, is actually a channel called Sprout. Sprout, aka PBS Kids Sprout, was basically a 24-hour preschool channel that had shows, activities, and even online games that are still engraved into my brain to this very day. Sprout launched on September 26, 2005. So for context, that's just eight months after I was born. A couple of years ago, I actually spent so long trying to find the name of this channel because I just remembered it so well and I knew it, it couldn't have been like PBS Kids. So this is what eventually led me to find out that it had shut down in like 2017, 2018. So today I just wanted to dive into kind of the history of Sprout as you know, a channel, and some of its iconic shows, of course, that stuck with me. But really, I want to answer the question, where did it go, and more importantly, why? Now, as I mentioned, Sprout launched in September of 2005, but brainstorming for a potential new channel, aka Sprout, um, began in June 2004, when PBS, HIT Entertainment, Sesame Workshop, and Comcast entered a partnership. The trademark for the name Sprout was filed shortly after that point in November of that year. So in April of 2005, Comcast officially revealed the channel's name and a Sprout VOD service was then launched that very same month. This service offered 55 hours of preschool shows in both English and Spanish. It was after this extremely successful on-demand launch and months of preparation that Sprout PBS Kids was launched onto actual TV. However, when Sprout launched, it was swamped with too many programs almost immediately, some of which were deemed inappropriate for the age demographic that they were aiming for. So they were all taken off the air and on-demand and online at some point in 2006, I'm gonna assume that they took the shows in question off the air because from the timeline that I was able to find, it doesn't seem like the channel as a whole was just taken off everything and came back a year later. After all, this was kind of an experimental stage in a way for the channel with it being so new and targeting just a way younger demographic than PBS had in the past. So it makes sense that some programs had to ultimately just be cut because they were figuring out their format style. I don't know what to call it, hopefully that makes sense, but what I mean by like format style is the thing that Sprout is probably the most known for uh, with shows like The Good Night Show, for example. The Good Night Show is basically a programming block designed to help preschoolers get ready for bedtime. Each of the episodes usually had a theme and episodes of other shows related to it would be played along through this block. The Sproutlets were also encouraged heavily to join in on the activities that were happening on screen um, with the host and of course Star. See, shortly after Sprout launched, Andrew Beecham was crowned Senior Vice President of Programming, which kind of explains an awful lot. Because the reason that the format of The Goodnight Show just stood out was because it was kind of unlike other children's programming that was airing in the US at the time. Well, guess what? Um, Andrew Beecham is British, so um, he was familiar with this style of children's programming from Britain. But the goal with like hosts like Kevin Yamada and Melanie Martinez was not just simply to act as navigators, but to add value with the activities that were happening on screen, such as, you know, singing, storytelling, and and even playing games. Kevin would actually read birthday cards as a part of the birthday show, and Melanie, also known as the babysitter, did crafts, sang songs, taught stretches and sign language, introduced Spanish words, and told stories as a part of the goodnight show. 
some of you might be a little confused right now because, you know, the host of The Good Night Show is Nina, right? Well, you wouldn't exactly be wrong. Nina, aka Michelle, went on to arguably be the most iconic host of the block with Star. But Melanie was the original host for the show for the first two seasons when it initially launched with Sprout. There was also another host after her named Leo uh, that was kind of like a fill-in replacement, but this was all before Nina became the long-term host. Anyway, what ended up happening was basically she got unfairly fired from the network for her involvement in a pregnancy PSA spoof that happened seven years before she even got this job, which ended up causing quite the outrage from parents. PBS's statement on the situation reads as follows. Late last week, Melanie Martinez, host of The Goodnight Show, alerted us to the internet posting of an independent short film that she appeared in seven years ago. PBS Kids Sprout has determined that the dialogue in this video is inappropriate for her role as a preschool program host and may undermine her character's credibility with our audience. As a result, PBS Kids Sprout has decided she will no longer appear as the host of The Goodnight Show. Melanie has been an important part of our network and we are so disappointed that we had to make this difficult decision. PBS Kids Sprout's foremost priority is to do what is best for our young viewers and their families. We remain committed to The Goodnight Show, which debuted last year as a valuable tool for parents to help children wind down after a busy day. Regularly scheduled programs within The Goodnight Show will continue to air in their designated time slots with new short form content replacing Melanie's segments. We are developing plans to launch a new season of The Goodnight Show with a new host in late 2006. Now, what did I mean by quite the outrage from parents, you may ask? Well, you know, she was in this inappropriate PSA spoof, duh. Um, no. The parents were actually outraged for Melanie in this situation because they knew it was just extremely unfair to her. To get an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to quote a specific um, New York Times article titled, PBS firing host of The Goodnight Show draws protests. This was made like freshly when this situation was going down back in August of 2006. That didn't sit well with many parents who deluged the network with complaints and started two petitions to have her reinstated. Many messages noted that the toddlers were unlikely to be surfing the internet and stumbled across the past work. In this article as well, we also hear from Michael Gelter, an American journalist, and how he personally got 250 emails alone about the situation. And out of all of those emails, only one was in support of PBS's decision to fire Melanie from the program. He also shared that PBS viewer services had received over 1,700 emails. About six of those were in favor of PBS's decision. It struck me as ironic that at the very time PBS is fighting against new Federal Communications Commission rulings about indecency that the network argues will inhibit documentary filmmakers and freedom of speech, it delivers such a subjective, like, punishment to a popular performer for something done seven years ago that was clearly a spoof. Now, I have to say, I absolutely agree with him, and from what Melanie had to say in her over-the-phone interview in this very same article, she seemed to be just very very passionate about her job at Sprout, and it just made me overall feel fucking awful for her. Because according to the book, she did everything right, never even hiding anything on her resume when she initially applied for the position. As for the videos at hand, I was able to find them and watch them, and honestly, I just really expected something so much worse than what I was watching. Not to mention that they are clearly, clearly spoofs, like it is the most blatant thing ever. Hi, um, I just wanted to add some kind of further context to what I'm talking about. Basically, David Mack, the co-writer, producer, and director of the videos, was also mentioned in this article, and he talks about basically, he removed the videos back in 2004, is the context I want to give, um, when he found out that Melanie was actually doing this audition for a PBS Kids show. He knew it wasn't the sort of thing you'd really want out there in circulation, and it was an old joke at this point and had really just ran its course anyways. But what had happened is that pirated copies of the videos had just still been making their rounds, so people who had downloaded these videos were re-uploading them on like platforms like YouTube and Google Video, neither of which existed back when the videos were originally made. 
Now, I don't want to get demonetized, but um, in one, she's promoting vibrators, and in the second one, she promotes Lana spelled backwards to avoid pregnancy. Wow, this is just not what I expected to be talking about in this video. But yeah, genuinely terrible move on Sprout's part. I mean, I understand why the decision was made, but honestly, it's very telling when even the parents were on Melanie's side in this situation. Also, maybe it's just me like living under a rock, but like, I feel like they were able to sweep this situation just under the rug very well because it wasn't until I was reading the Sprout wiki page that I even found out that this ever happened. You think like with all the outrage for her and like multiple articles coming up when I specifically searched for this situation that it would be something that at least pops up when, I don't know, you Google the brand. But to get back on the topic of the channel's programming, the shows on Sprout did not actually have commercials. But the channel did have the same dose of sponsorship spots as other channels from PBS. See, PBS and Sesame Workshop co-wrote Sprout's sponsorship policy, which was compliant with the Children's Advertising Review Unit guidelines, so the ads would only air in between programs in small quantities. So basically, they did have ads, but they were more targeted. As a result, there were many advertisements for stuff like identity theft and paying taxes and car insurance, although there were also a handful of commercials aimed towards the children watching. Mostly, they were mail-order toy commercials from, like, As Seen on TV, as, for example, something like Pillow Pets. But when talking about Sprout, I can't just talk about their live action content. This channel really had so many other shows airing too, like Pingu, The Hoobs, Barney, Thomas the Train, Musical Mornings with Koo, Fifi and the Flower Tots, Pick Me. It's a special Sprout that like you, starring in their own story. Oh, I can't wait to see who's here to share with us on Pick Me today. Dive Ollie Dive, Franny's Feet, JJ Jetplane. Rory the Racing Car, and the absolutely iconic Pajanimals. And keep in mind, this is only stuff I'm highlighting from the years 2006 to 2008. But the other show, along with The Goodnight Show, that Sprout is probably the most known for is The Sunny Side Up Show, which began in 2007. This show would air in mornings on Sprout's programming block, similar to how they had a designated show like The Goodnight Show for, like, the nighttime. Now, this was like Good Morning America for people under five, so they had their fair share of, you know, guests. For starters, we have Jack Black, but there was also Kiki Palmer, Michelle Obama, Howie Mandel. Hi, Chica. What are you going to do? Chica's gonna do a magical dress-up act. Are you kidding me? Aubrey Plaza, Sportacus, and Stephanie from Lazy Town. Chica, let's run! <laughs> and Jeff! Jeff Kinney. So I couldn't find the footage or a photo of Jeff actually on the show, but I wanted to share that one of the pajanimals was, and I love just how it's like kind of breaking the fourth wall that they get to come on this talk show. It's one of my favorite parts about it. Heidi Klum. Presto! Heidi Klum. And John Green. Those were just the ones that like stood out to me as I was like reading through the wiki, but there was actually a whole lot more. But now I really want to move forward to 2009 because something, you know, monumental kind of happened. 2009, the spring of 2009 specifically, was when it was announced that the Wiggles would be moving to Sprout from Playhouse Disney with their own block which ended up launching in August of that same year. The reason for this was due to competition with the Imagination Movers, a children's music group from the New Orleans who had just received their TV show, their own TV show, about five to six months ago on Disney. Following this change, the Wiggles also appeared on the Sunny Side Up show with Kelly and our co-host, Chica the Chicken. So something I've noticed about the cartoons that aired on Sprout is a lot of them were international and just brought to the channel. I bring this up now and not earlier when I was like listing shows because because the British stop motion series Rubba Dubbers also premiered the very same day that the Wiggles went on the Sunny Side Up show. So this is on topic, guys. When I tell you, when I tell you, I can't even express it enough how I was convinced for such a long time that I made up the Rubba Dubbers. Never in my life would anyone know what I was talking about when I would, you know, describe the show, the Rubba Dubbers. And now it just makes perfect sense because this whole time it was actually British. But literally, I became so obsessed with this show, in fact, that there was a point where I got it on. On DVD. Basically, it's a stop motion or like claymation show. I think it's honestly a mix of both about these bath toys who live in a bathroom together. 
Their names were Tub the Frog, who is pretty unnerving to look at, I'm not gonna lie, Splashy the Starfish, Finbar the Mighty Shark, Terrence the Bubble Bath Crocodile, Winona the Whale, Reg the Robot, and Amelia the Submarine. Not only do I like the concept of this show, but the graphics are just so like colorful and fun to look at. Like I think that was the biggest appeal for me. But also I'm just like a fan of stop motion and claymation in general. But Rubba Dubbers stands. let me know, you know, let's unite. Okay, but seriously, let me know if you remember the Rubba Dubbers. Like I just needed to appreciate them in today's video. They don't get enough love, where's the hype? But to continue on to 2009, a new season of The Goodnight Show actually premiered as well. And by this point, Nina was the host and she actually guest starred on the Sunny Side Up show to promote her new season. But 2009 is also important because Sprout really got a major facelift, if you will, during this time. With each of the blocks or shows airing at this time open, having like a new opening. The opening was the Sproutlets, or I never explained what Sproutlets were, and I think I mentioned it earlier too. It's what kids were referred to on this channel. You know how a sprout is like a plant starting to grow? It's kind of genius, really. Anyways, it would have like the Sproutlets or their parents um, opening a cardboard box, like shoebox, uh, with the Sprout logo. Then in 2010 was when Sprout decided to kind of invest in more of a long form style of content because they launched in HD and started airing their content on NBC Kids as well. This effort was most apparent with the launch of a new show titled Noodle and Doodle, which I fondly remember. Noodle and Doodle premiered on, you know, September 25th, 2010, the same date that the Sunny Side Up show actually began to air every day, including on weekends. It was hosted by Sonny's um, Sean Roach and a puppet named Noodle McDoodle. In this show, they basically ride this double-decker bus. Okay, yeah, the more I talk about this channel, the more just like blatantly British it seems, even though it's not. But anyway, um, in the show they ride this bus and they focus on making things. I specifically remember crafts, like I thought that's all they did, but apparently I think they made food as well from what I was able to find online. But along with Noodle and Doodle, already existing shows like Pajanimals saw a long form release with a total of 26 episodes being made and the Sunny Side Up show got a long form spinoff titled The Chica Show. This ran from years 2010 to 2011, so very short lived. We also saw shows like Dirt Girl World, Chloe's Closet, Nina's Little Fables, which is a new segment of The Goodnight Show, Super Y, Lazy Town, Chica, let's run! Poppycat, and Angelina Ballerina The Next Steps, airing on the channel. But it was after this point where things just really start to get very messy. Because through the years of 2011 to 2013, we saw a lot of business decisions happening in relation to Sprout as a channel, which ultimately led NBC Universal gaining full ownership of the channel. To explain it in short, Comcast claimed a 51% share of NBC Universal, which gave them somewhat control of Sprout. But when Apex Partners sold HIT Entertainment to Universal, they were able to also claim their share of Sprout. At the same time, Sesame Workshop ended up selling their share to NBC Universal, so obviously they were able to get their share as well. And then with that, eventually they were able to claim the shares of PBS and Apex Partners, gaining full 100% control of Sprout. By the way, Apex Partners is like a British um, network, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully I explained all that right. Like there was a lot of information, but not a lot of coverage of it online, if that makes sense. Anyway, obviously with PBS not having any relation to the channel anymore, the PBS Kids part of the channel's name ended up getting the boot on November 13th, 2013. Look for the Gummy Bear album in stores on November 13th. Amidst these changes, um, Sprout also had a float in the Macy's Day Parade in 2012, which specifically was uh, focused on the Sunny Side Up show. With this, Sprout would actually continue to appear in the parade up until 2016. Oh, also speaking of the Sunny Side Up show, fun fact, due to business changes, um, once again, filming of the Sunny Side Up show was moved from Pennsylvania, I believe, to New York, and the show started filming specifically on 30 Rockefeller Plaza. By The Tonight Show, house band The Roots wardrobe rack. So this, as a result, caused celebrity guest stars to start appearing on the show. Now, shockingly, it's at times like this where channels and projects um, began to plummet, if you will. Like, I've seen this story before. But not with Sprout. No, no, no. Actually, things only got better for the channel at this point in time. 
because at the start of 2014, Sprout actually saw a 5% audience increase among preschoolers and a 3% gain in households compared to the fourth quarter of the previous year. But it wasn't until 2015 that Sprout really had any new graphics introduced to the channel. On September 26, 2015, it was in order to celebrate the channel turning 10 years old. Yes, guys, let's just destroy everything you already knew about this channel to celebrate. I feel like I've said that date so many times or like the day before that date because Sprout has a pattern of just releasing projects or changes on their anniversary date or very close. Anyway, um, by this point, a few PBS shows were dropped from the channel, such as Barney, Thomas and Friends, um, Bob the Builder, Super Y, and Sesame Street, obviously. Although Sesame Street did air until like November um, as a result of a deal made with Sesame Workshop. However, the spinoff um, Play With Me Sesame, which aired um, on the channel in 2007, continued to actually run until sometime next year. It was during this time too that the Sunny Side Up show had a very big scenery change. It was moved from the Sunshine Barn that we all knew and loved to a city loft with touch screen. They also decided for some reason to remove the the and show from the name, so it's just Sunny Side Up. Why? I just I just asked why. What was the reason? Sprout also um, introduced two new shows at this time, um, Nina's World, which was an animated version of The Good Night Show, essentially, and um, Sydney Sailboat. I am so scared. Get me out of here. During this time, Sprout received a new slogan as well. Um, it was free to grow, and um, it was actually picked by this lady named Alyssa Milano, who became Sprout's, and I quote, Mom Bassett. She went on to further announce her new role in the Sunnyside Up show shortly before the move happened, but also before um, the road trip arc happened, which I forgot to mention, the show ended up taking on. And of course, the graphics for this channel also saw a huge change during this time. They became more minimalist and like modern versus like the crafty and creative childhood, just nostalgic vibe of the previous Sprout eras. But ultimately, because NBC Universal was like, oh hey, like we own Sprout anyways, on May 1st, 2017, they announced the Sprout channel would be rebranded to Universal Kids permanently. Although the Sprout name was used for the channel's, you know, 15 hour preschool block. Well, that was until early 2018 at least. As a result of NBC2, um, Sunny Side Up was officially replaced with another show called Sprout House, later known as Snug's House. It was hosted by veteran Sunny host Carly, and of course this orange puppet dog named Snug. This show also saw the occasional appearances from another human character named TJ, but it was very, very short-lived, um, with the show ending the very next year in 2018. So hopefully you can tell why I said 2017, 2018 when talking about the death of Sprout. You look it up and it says 2017, and sure that was the year the name was officially conned, but the Sprout name and website were both removed in 2018. I say Sprout name because, again, that preschool block up until 2018. So from this point on, the only traces of Sprout really uh, that were left were the Sunny Side Up show backdrop in a Sarah and Duck promo picture and the flower-shaped window in the Sprout House set until well, that show stopped airing. Something to note too is in 2017, the network had been bringing back just a lot of older shows that used to air on Sprout back in the day, like, you know, Ready, Set, Wiggle on June 5th, 2017, then Barney and Friends on December 17th, 2018, Bob the Builder on April 23rd, 2019, and then lastly, The Chica Show on May 20th, 2019. However, this was very calculated. Um, it was only really done because of the low viewership the network received after the initial rebrand happened. Not only did they rebrand to Universal Kids, but a lot of changes just happened very, very quickly. For starters, they began airing shows aired at preteens, which is already just a hugely drastic change considering the preschool demographic that Sprout had been aiming. They also acquired a lot of new shows, but continued to focus on original content instead, which unfortunately seemed to just not help their case at all. Despite the fact that some of this content was with DreamWorks Animation, which they also acquired at some point, but viewership still dropped 30% um, in 2017. And things didn't get better in 2018 because it dropped a total of 73%. This caused the network to really shift their focus back to strictly acquired content to do, you know, what they could to really gain back their viewership. 
And although they didn't stoop lower than the year before, in 2019 they were still the lowest viewed children's television network in the United States, with a total of 31,000 viewers per day. As of 2023, I was honestly expecting to find this channel as a whole was just in the grave, but it seems like not too much has even changed from the last four years. From what I was able to find, according to US TVDB, the channel is currently the 112th most popular channel on TV and is watched by a total of 23,000 people, which is down 26% from the last month and even less than, you know, who was watching in 2019. And this is with the shift of focus from original content back to acquired content. But yeah, that's pretty much what happened with PBS Kids Sprout, and I hope you guys really enjoyed. Please let me know if you grew up with Sprout as well, and what shows really stuck with you. It's really unfortunate what happened to this channel. I don't even think it was dead from the moment it was just purchased by a whole new company, but I do think that they would have been better off just leaving it as it was. Instead of doing a whole risky rebrand with a ton of drastic changes all at once. And I will see you guys in my very next video. You are sure to crack a smile. Here we go now, sunny style. Let's get started.